You want to make a fabric server in order to play fabric mods with your friends? Let's get started. First things first, go to the second link down below. That will take you here. Now, this is our in-depth guide on getting fabric locally. This is also going to work for getting the files for the server. But the reason I want to link out to this specifically is anyone who joins your server is going to need to have fabric installed locally. So go ahead, send this to your friends who you want to join the server, and then they can go ahead and get fabric installed, and then we'll come back here later. And then whenever you've got your server set up, they're good to join it. Nevertheless, once you're here, go ahead and click Download Fabric to go to Fabric's official download page. On this page, you want to click on the Download Universal jar there. That will open up this where you want to go ahead and keep or save the file. Now, while this is downloading, I do want to mention, this is not a 24-hour server. It's only up and running when your computer's up and running, and it's also hosted on your own internet connection. On top of that, you're going to need a good computer and a good internet connection because modded servers are extremely resource-intensive, meaning not only do you need a good computer to be able to run the mods themselves, you also need a good computer to run the mods on the server so make sure you have a really good computer in order to run this server plus it's only meant for your friends your family people you trust and that's because this is hosted on your own internet meaning anyone who gets the IP address to this server can not only DDoS you which is basically like hit your internet offline they can also figure out where you live due to your latitude and longitude coordinates but what if you don't want to have to worry about any of that you just want an easy server that can get set up in minutes you can add mods to it and customize it any way that you want and you don't have to worry about security or internet connection or anything like that and it also doesn't use your own computer's hardware. It's hosted on high-quality hardware meant for Minecraft mods. Well, that's where our company's Simple Game Hosting comes in. Go to the first link in the description down below, thebreakdown.xyz slash simple, start your very own 24-hour DDoS-projected Minecraft server for you and your friends. You can easily add mods to your server and customize your server using Fabric Mods any way that you want, and there's one-click installation of hundreds of mod packs. So if you'd rather just play a mod pack with your friends, Simple Game Hosting allows that to get set up super easily. On top of that, there's expert live chat support there to help you out. Let's say you add a mod to your server, you go to start it, it breaks, you don't know what's going on. Simple Game Hosting's live chat support there is there to help you with those issues and get your server back online. So stop struggling to host a Minecraft server and start your Minecraft server the simple way with a live chat support person in your corner to help you out at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple. Nevertheless, once Fabric is downloaded here, we want to go ahead and minimize our browser. Then once we minimized our browser, we want to right click on our desktop, create a new folder, and title that folder folder fabric server 1.21.5 you can title this anything you want but that's what this is right then we want to find the fabric file we downloaded that's going to be in our downloads folder here move that to our desktop and then what we want to do is right click on it click on open with and then click java now if you don't have java here or you do you click on it it doesn't work what you need to do is go to the description down below and download java 21. java 21 is required for minecraft fabric servers it's required for minecraft mods and servers so if you're making a modded server like you are with a fabric server you definitely need to get java this is of course linked down below it's our in-depth guide text and video format after you've gotten this you'll also need to go get the jar fix but first get java then run the jar fix the jar fix is going to take and link the jar files on your computer back to java but once you've done that we can go ahead and open that fabric installer again right click on it click on open with and click java then once the fabric installer opens we want to make sure 1.21.5 is selected and as i mentioned earlier anyone who joins the server needs fabric installed in their client locally you need that as well so let's go ahead and do that make sure create profiles checked click install and now it's going to install fabric locally for you once that's done click ok and now we can get the server installed go ahead and click on server here we're going to make sure 1.21.5 is selected Loader version's fine. Launcher location, we need to change. Click the three dots here next to the launcher location settings, and then go ahead and go to desktop. Click on that Fabric One Server 1.21.5 folder you created, and click open. Now click install. It's going to download this. Next, you want to go ahead and click download server jar. It's going to go ahead and do that. And then last but not least, click this generate button. It's kind of a lot to do there, but once you've done all of that, we can go ahead and click done here and close out of the Fabric installer. You can also delete it. Now we want to open up this Fabric server folder, and this has everything that we need ready to go. All we got to do is double click on this start.bat. And by the way, if you don't see the stop bat here and you have two start files, go up to view, then go down to click show, and then make sure file name extensions is checked. Again, that's view, show, file name extensions. Right now we don't have dot bat. We click on file name extensions and there it is dot bat. Double click on that. It's going to go ahead and attempt to start your server. This is going to fail, but that's because we need to agree to the Minecraft ULA, which we didn't even have until we attempted to start the server. Once this does fail, it will look like this where we can press any key to continue and we now have this eula.txt file open that up and assuming you agree to the minecraft eula which we do change eula equals false to eula equals true true exactly like that 
click File, Save, and now we can go ahead and double click on that start.bat file again, and your Fabric server will start. Now at this point, you're the only person that can join your Fabric server, but I recommend doing that. So let's go ahead and open up the Minecraft launcher, and then we want to play Minecraft using that Fabric installation that we created earlier when we were getting our server files. So if we go to Installations up here, we have this Fabric Loader 1.21.5. We want to play Minecraft using that, and then in-game, again, we can join the server. Right now, we're the only people in the entire world who could join this server, but that's okay. We want to make sure we can join it because if you're lagging right now with just you online with no mods on the server, you're definitely going to have issues when your friends join or when you add mods, and definitely if you did both. So once we're in the Minecraft launcher here, we can go ahead and go to multiplayer, click proceed, and then we can add a server. Now for the server name, you can name it anything you want. I'm just going to name it local connection because this is a local connection that only you can use. And then for the server address, local host is what we're going to enter in for the server IP address there. Click done. After a few seconds, it will resolve the server and we can double click on it. And we'll see us join in here on the left hand side, right like so. There it is. Successfully joined the server. I would recommend running around, things like that, making sure there's no lag. You may see a little lag coming through on the video. That's just because I'm recording this while I'm doing the server and all that stuff. It's kind of resource intensive to just run the server and play Minecraft. So to add recording to that can sometimes add lag. But we're going to go here. We can go ahead and get this added with mods, but we can also allow our friends to join, which is actually the next thing I would recommend you doing before adding any mods make sure your friends can join this server to do that you're going to need to port forward we go ahead and quit this we also want to stop this server come over here to the console and type stop exactly like that and hit enter that's going to make sure everything saves properly then we can go ahead and port forward now unfortunately youtube doesn't like us doing 30 minute videos anymore and so because of that we have to break out the port forwarding guide to here this is our in-depth guide on port forwarding linked of course in the description down below that goes super in-depth and covers everything you need to know to get port forwarding done for your minecraft server this works of course for modded servers otherwise we wouldn't be linking out to it and it covers everything in text and video format now, once you port forwarded, you've confirmed your friends can join using your public IP. It's all covered in that video. Then you can add mods to your server. To do that, we want to go here or here. That is Modrinth or Curse Forge. These are the most popular places to download Minecraft mods, virus check, all that stuff, so you don't have to worry. And once you're here, you can go to the left hand side and filter for Fabric 1.21.5 mods. Only Fabric mods will work, and we're actually going to get Waystones here. Once you've clicked on that, we can go to Files and again, sort for 1.21.5 Fabric. Now, if you were to download this file and install it, it wouldn't work. That's because we need another mod. How do you see that? Well, if you go into Waystones here and go to Related Projects, we can see we need Bomb and we need the Fabric API for this to work. Luckily, we can download both of those. So we're going to go ahead and click on them here. I'll open them in new tabs because we need to download Waystones as well by clicking Download here. Once this is ready to download, we will need to save it. And we need to repeat that process for the Fabric API, grabbing the 1.21.5 version, and then also grabbing the 1.21.5 version of bomb. So if we go in here, we can search for the fabric 1.21.5 version right here. Now you can also do this on mod rent, see the dependency mods, all of that stuff, just like you can on CurseForge. How would you do that? Well, it's actually really easy. Let's go up here to Modernth and we would filter for 1.21.5 fabric, right like so. And then let's use Waystones again as the example here. And we go to Waystones and we go to versions, we can filter for that version yet again and then click on it. We can see the dependencies, Bomb and the Fabric API, download those, all of that stuff. Now at this point, we can go ahead and minimize our browser and install these on our server. Now they're gonna be in a downloads folder here. I'm gonna move them to the desktop for ease of use. Once these are on your desktop, all you wanna do is add them in your Fabric server folder here to the mods folder. It's that easy, just drag and drop them over. Then though, we need to copy them. So select them, right click and copy because we also need to install these locally. As I mentioned, anyone who joins your server needs the mods that are installed on the server installed in their local mods folder within Minecraft. How would they do that? Well, we would open up Minecraft right like so, go to installations at the top, hover over fabric and click on the folder that appears. Then go into the mods folder and then right click in our case and paste. If it was your friends, they would download these mods and add them into the mods folder right like so. And now when we play Minecraft, these mods will be active and most importantly, we will be able to join the server with them. So I'm going to go ahead and play Minecraft with the mods, start the server with the mods and then join everything, show you it's all working. But at this point, your modded server for fabric is set up and running. So we can join the server again using that local connection. Your friends would use your public IP address. Once we're in game, it's pretty easy to add in some waystones. If we op ourselves, we're going to come over here and type op and then our username. That gives us permissions in game to do things like game mode creative. And then we can switch over here to waystones. We'll grab a few of these. 
waystones here, and we can then place these down. So we'll do one here. Let's we'll just do random names just because we are testing, of course. So we just want to come over here and place these down. And now I can go from this one over to this one, over to this one, and then back around over to this one here. So that's proof waystones are working and you are good to go. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to check out in the description this video, how to fix a broken Minecraft server. It's me troubleshooting Minecraft servers, modded and vanilla for 20 minutes. Any vanilla issues you have, by the way, can also appear in modded. So keep that in mind. And that's why it's worth checking out because your server probably will have issues at some point. And unless you're with Simple Game Hosting and have a live chat to help you out, then you won't be able to get any help other than like this video here. So that's why we provided it. It's helped over 120,000 people, which is great to see. Nevertheless, enjoy your fabric server for Minecraft 1.21.5. We will see you in the next video and I'm out. Peace.